Hello and welcome back to part three of our series on sleep. Part three is going to bring us to looking at dreams, maybe the most exciting part of sleeping. Um, so dreams is kind of a funny thing to talk about because not much is understood yet. There's still a lot of research going on here, uh, again, in a lot of different fields, right? Just trying to determine what consciousness is. But we do have some theories, right? We have been looking at this since the days of Freud. It's been about 100 years doing a lot of experimentation, a lot of research. So there is some evidence to support some theories about why we dream, what the functions of dreams are, where they come from, and why we experience them, why we sleep. So let's look at our first theory, uh, first proposed by Freud, right? This was actually his theory. This was his explanation for what dreams are and why we dream, uh, and that it was a manifestation of latent symbolic content in our heads, right? We were trying to fulfill our desires and our wishes in our dreams, right? Sounds right. Sounds pretty good. And he called this wish fulfillment, right? That was the name of his theory that we dream to fulfill our wishes. It's where we actually uh, cash out on those uh, dreams of latent symbolism. So that's our first theory. Uh, second theory, a little more modern, right? Moving forward ahead through the years of, of research and experimentation here on sleeping brains. Um, so this next one, what's going on? We're trying to solve problems, really, just subconsciously, right? We're in, when we're sleeping, we're in this altered state of consciousness. Uh, maybe while we were awake that day, we came across some problem. We couldn't crack it while we were awake. But maybe our brain while we're sleeping is playing with these experience and these memories and trying to convert them into usable information, right? To solve our problems. So this theory of dreaming is called information processing, the information processing theory of dreaming. That that's what our dreams are doing. They're just trying to process the information we took in while we were awake. And this third one, perhaps maybe the most modern, right? The most recent, these are, and there are more theories in these three, right? These are just some of the big three that have really stood the test of time. Um, that our dreams are just, our experienced interpretations of what's going on in our brain while we're sleeping, right? We, you can still hear things. You can still respond to some stimuli while you're asleep. It is considered a state of consciousness, albeit altered. Um, so you're having these perceptions, right? You're asleep, but you're still perceiving. You could be having random neural activity still firing off too, right? It's not like your brain is dead while you're asleep, right? It's still very much alive. It's still very active, especially in that REM stage. So what do we call this theory, right? Just explaining dreams as what's going on while we're asleep. We call that activation synthesis. The dream theory called activation synthesis or the activation synthesis theory of dreaming. And those are the big three. Those are the three you're probably going to see most often. Um, pretty solid explanations for what dreaming is, why we dream. Uh, but let's look at a practice problem. Let's look at something you might see on your exam. This dreams example. So which of the following theories suggests that the function of dreams is to process and consolidate memories from when you were awake that day? So the first one, activation synthesis. That was that that theory states that your dreams are really just processing what's currently happening in your brain. So uh, no, right? It would not be from what you experienced in that waking day. B information processing. That's one that tries to problem solve based on things you may have experienced that day. So B looks good. C, Freudian wish fulfillment. No, we're, no, that's not really what the question's asking about, right? It's not about uh, realizing those latent desires. And D, lucid dreaming. We actually didn't get into that one. That's one where you, know, you have like very conscious control over your dreams, uh, that you recount them, you journal them after you wake up. Um, we didn't get into that one. That's you know, not really the focus here, and that's not what the question is asking about. So in this case, it seems like B, uh, information processing theory, that's the one where you're trying to process and consolidate memories from when you were awake that day. Um, we got one more uh, as a, in this series, and we're just going to look at some practice problems for your exams. That's what's coming up next time. See you then.